morning boys <clears throat> uh, it's Thursday just uh, in the shop got me coffee so we need a catch up yesterday was MIA um, I did a job in the morning and then in the afternoon we managed to get a secret viewing of the house and I managed to get my builder mate Shane to come with what basically transpired was um, we ended up leaving with the estate agent basically laughing right at the whole debacle so for the first time <coughs> ever yesterday we got access to the garage um, which basically showed a whole host of issues problems door frames not done right every single door in the house needs replacing because they're not cut square the frames are twisted and not finished um, he also noticed that between the new extension and the old house that if you there was like a there was like a, a drop in the floor and if you stood on it and bounced it, it moved right um, the roof is leaking um, there's water in the house upstairs and in one of the bedrooms there's signs of damp already which Shane picked up Toilets need redoing, bathrooms need redoing, showers are fitted upside down. I know that sounds odd, but the like the kind of the tap area is up the wrong way, the mixers are wrong. Um, pipe work needs redoing, roof is probably gonna have to come off and be redone. Um, and, it, and it just opened up like the biggest can of worms that I've ever seen in my life. So much so that Marlborough Road now is massively off the list. Um, it's gonna take anywhere from 30 to 60 grand to put right as a rough estimate um, and the guy won't budge on price um, there's two more people going to view it tomorrow um, but literally yesterday for the first time our estate agent actually kind of opened up a bit and she knew what we were doing she knew that we were going around the house trying to find faults we we found more than enough but pretty much there's three or four thousand pounds worth of doors that need replacing, frames that need redoing, bathrooms that re need redoing, the roof outside the front, the, leg, the lead work, um, the skylights, the kitchen, the flooring. Um, the front of the house has got like a fake bay window added to it with a plastic tub. And the wall, the skirting board is where the wall was and they've moved like the front of the house to accommodate this new bay window and there's literally like a four inch gap between the skirting board and the front wall itself of the house and everything's moving right <laughs> um so Mulber road is most definitely off the list um i came away last night actually feeling like just super super gutted more than anything um because it was a house i kind of set my heart on and then to see that mess that shane found um it, it really, really upset me because I was just kind of like, I just want to buy a house. We just want to move into a family home. Um, and what I thought and what looked like, uh, you know, we're going to do some work to it and it is priced high. He's basically said, stay clear of it completely. Like it's just, um, even, even things like building regs have not been adhered to. So in the garage, there's supposed to be like fireboards and things like that. And um the the building regs because of covid have kind of been skipped because they just need to take photographs that are aimed in a certain way because the building inspectors can't visit so they've basically taken photos without showing the real problems uh and then they've been signed off which is obviously a worry we found the documentation online that was basically just the date and time and the fact that they didn't go every every portion of their extension has never been inspected um, and it clearly shows like the finish on the place is absolutely absolutely shocking um, so we're really really gutted I am really really gutted um, really like wifey really likes Rawton I'm on the fence with it it's a fantastic downstairs but the upstairs I find is a bit small um, so now we're we're stuck again. I don't know what to do. She wants to go to Rawton. I'm like I'm in an R and about what to do, but Marlborough Road is just unbelievably bad. Like I've never seen a house 
like so bodged like I don't know anything about building um, but even I could see clearly there's problems and the guy is a builder he's a professional builder that's his job and it's just the worst like we walked in places and Shane's literally sat there just like cracking up looking at stuff like and then when we got to the garage even I was like well I know that pipes should not come out of the garage roof there and then go that way they're like soft pipes and then some disappear into a wall when all the breeze block is not cut flat everything is like like it's almost been done with a hammer every single one of them's got like some like look it looks like a rock face like the whole thing was just bs from start to finish and now he's opened our eyes into a big problem with the house so we're not we're not interested in it we're going to retract our offer and have nothing more to do with it and even the estate agent was laughing um she started off quite calm and quite collected but as we come out of there she was just cracking up she was actually laughing um and yeah the guy is basically just saying that he won't budge from five hundred and forty thousand pound which is half a million pound how over half a million pound house um obscene obscene but anyway we're in today it's a thursday uh i've got a bmw booked in today we're having a single din pioneer um 7200 we've got big face kit to do um parking sensor retention steering control retention all of the fun stuff but while we're here i just wanted to give a comment to the guys the boys you so when i ask you always kind of comment and get things going um and i always say thank you for it but i'm gonna say now thanks for mustang thanks for rat speed thanks for blue thanks for george james nigel carl mino chris Paul Anstey, um, Alfalafa, Chamosku, I hope I'm saying your name right, George, uh, just every time you're on there, Jimmy, <coughs> David, every time you're on there commenting when I ask you to comment, Dave, um, Tough Guy Rules, like, there's just, you know, there's Richard, Ricardo, um, Gary, everyone that comments on it, like, I just want to give you a little shout out. Um, BLX, uh, Mark, all of the boys, John, um, Chris, everyone that comes on and comments for me, Ian, I, I appreciate it massively. All of you boys, give you a little shout out um, because I do read everything. Um, Terry, Ivan, um, Jace, you know, the, the list goes on. Um, I do appreciate you boys getting in touch and, and commenting on it. Mike, Brian, Gary, another Mark, another Mark. Everything I put up there, you boys are always on it and you're, you're commenting and you're replying and you're getting interacted with the video, which helps me out. So I just wanted to give you a little shout out, say thank you. Um, the, the fun continues. We will be videoing today and obviously doing the install on the Beamer. Um, and now I don't know what we're doing housewise. I'm, I'm lost. Upstairs in the Rawton house, I'm not a fan. Downstairs, love it. The outside garden, love it. Parking, not a fan. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, you know, they say house buying is the most stressful thing you can do. Like, I'm up here. I seriously am at the top of my wits. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm lost. Right now guys, so first in this morning we've got a one series which is just behind me. Just gonna keep talking so we've got the radio on. Give me one second. We'll jump in the car so we can hear the stereo. Um, so we've got this kind of one series, um, this kind of radio area. So we're gonna go straight in with the single din pioneer, the flip out screen. Um, there is two options for this. You can get the double din which let's get this out you can get the double din where you've got to kind of move the heater control up radio comes down and then these buttons end up in the ashtray but honestly i'm not a fan um the cutting that you've got to do and the way that the plastic sits afterwards i don't really like it and i don't think it's a, a kind of good fit so i'm i'm all for the there's nothing wrong with this fascia kit doing a single din radio i think it's better so we're going to take this out, put the Pioneer in, microphone going to go up here, aerial going to go over there, USB in the glove box. Um, this has got front and rear PDC. 
um, start button. <laughs> uh, this has got front and rear PDC, so we're going to keep that working with the active lead and give him some toys. So that thing there is going in. See you soon. Right in guys, there we go. Um, so the beam is done. Uh, I fought with it a little bit. It wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. We had to get some workaround bits going. But what we've basically got is USB in the top pocket. I've run that through the top of the dash. We had to remove the old school cup holder, stroke phone holder. Uh, I'll put his doggy back, or whatever it is, person. Uh, microphone in the middle, USB in the top. His GoPro batteries are testing me today. <clears throat> so we're done with the Beamer, as I was saying. Uh, so we've got our steering controls working, parking sensor beeper is inside here. Um, USB in there, digital aerial there, microphone there, and the old radio obviously is out. So I'll get this ready to go, give them a shout, leave in the instructions for the steering controls, and that's it. You can hear the beeps and bongs still, radio folds away like it's supposed to. There we go, nice and tidy. See you in a bit. Got Kia Electric next. Right then lads, next we got in Kia Nero, full electric. This thing's a bit swish. Uh, it's brand new, 70, 72 reg. We've got uh, front and rear dash cameras to do in it. I love the fact that the parcel shelf is, it's like a sunscreen that you get on the uh, camera sets. <laughs> um, fuse box is down here in this one. The 12 volt fuse box. Um, obviously this has got the twin display, twin dash. Are oh, you, stop making noise. We're trying to film here, woman. What are you doing? So front camera is gonna go up here in the middle, out of the way, uh, depending on where the swept line is. Let's make a mess. We got wipers, hello. Can come on? Can I spray you? There we go. Okay, so. Oh yeah, good good coverage. So we'll probably go somewhere here with a camera because we can see where the cut line is there from the wipers. So we'll stick somewhere middle for the front camera. Obviously rear is quite self-explanatory. Oh. Do -do 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 -do. 
Um, <laughs> front is self-explanatory, rear is self-explanatory. We're going to crack on. See you in a bit, everyone. Bye. A few inches later. Guys, oh, electric car is done. I say electric, I, I, it's a hybrid, so it's got both uh, volume. Let's just turn that down a minute. It's quite nice, really. We've got big old reverse camera with some wobbly ass lines. So front camera, obviously here with the GPS puck. This is the F200 Pro and the rear one just there on the rear glass. It's fairly low because of the wipe swipe, as you can see from the uh, rear view mirror, uh, at the rear view window. Bing bong to you too. Um, but the um, yeah, camera's got to sit low enough to be it be able to sit in the swept area. But we'll get this one finished up. I'm just going to go through the setup on my phone. That's why the phone's on the dash. Give him a ring. Get him to come pick it up. It's weird how it switches between electric and petrol. Like one minute you can hear a little hamster wheel, the next minute, silence. All right, let's get this camera set up. I'll speak to you in a bit, everyone. Right then, boys, we are out. Thursday done. I'm getting ready to shut up shop. Um, temperatures dropped, it's got really cold. Um, but that's it. Vehicle's all picked up. We're back at it again tomorrow. Ugh. I'm knackered, I'm tired, I'm stressed, I'm not sleeping, I don't know what to do. See you all soon. Thanks for commenting, boys. Appreciate it. One more time. You're the best. See you soon.